Here's an example. Here's a program that sums the elements of a vector x. Note the vector is a very large one, 100,000. Uh, so let's create it. This first line just creates the vector x, sequence from 1 to 100,000. Then we are initializing a variable s and just putting a, a number in it, 0. And then we're executing this for loop. We're going for a in x. And you'll note what it's doing here. It's going to add a to s and um, replace s every time. So let's do that. And then we can take a look at what we just did. And we realize by looking at this program that we've carried out n addition operations, but 2 times n plus 1 variable assignments every time we go through the loop. That is, we assign a value to a and to s each time we go around the for loop. So we're actually doing, as, as long as we're doing 2 times the length of the vector in terms of variable assignments. Now, we've already seen that Creating or changing the size of a vector, which is sometimes called redimensioning an array, it's relatively slow. So it's always a good idea when we know how big a vector will be to initialize it fully grown, so to speak, but full of zeros than it is to increase it incrementally. So let's take a look at that. This time we'll actually invoke the system time argument so we can see the effects on the time that it takes. So here we create a vector, I'm sorry, just a number, n is a number 10,000. And then we're going to repeat from 0 to 10,000 and put that in x. And then we're going to go through this for loop from 1, it'll start at 1 and go all the way up to 10,000. And we're going to compute i squared. And every time we do this, we're going to put that new value into a, uh, the next version of the next uh, element, the next index of x. That is, i will go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up to 10,000. So we're constantly squaring this, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared. And we're populating this display as we go along. So let's see how long that takes. And it's relatively fast. Now, if we do it like this, because see, what we have done there is we already uh, 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 redimensioned our array. If we do it like this, if we just simply assign an empty vector to x and then do the exact same for loop, it takes much longer, of an order 15 times as long. Because in this one, x has been redimensioned. In this one, it hasn't been. Now, theoretically, we can understand that. but And, and in practice, it's true as well. We, we should identify the longest or more, most important operation and count how many times it's performed. Now, if you're just, as I would say, fooling around with R, you really don't care, care about this. But if you're writing code, and you're, especially if you're going, going to reuse the code, the functions you create, you, de you definitely want to take this into consideration and make them as efficient as possible. So uh, for issues that we're going to get, in get into for the remainder of this course, numerical integration, root finding, optimization, working with any sort of user-defined function of f, it's a good idea to count how many times a function that is determined by the values of x is evaluated for different x values. So that, that will help a lot in being able to have some sort of idea how to engineer the efficiency of our, of our functions. And the assignment we just had, which has several parts, numerical sorting, just a simple count of how many comparisons are made of this form is x less than y or not makes a difference. Now, there is this function rprof. Let's take a look at that. This is to enable the profiling 
of R's execution, enable or disable profiling of the execution of R expressions. Details. Enabling profiling automatically disables any existing profiling to another of the same file. Profiling works by writing out the call stack every interval seconds to the file specified. Now, it, this, is, this helps you get some sort of a time interval measurement. So you might take a look at this. This is a built-in function that will help you understand the time requirements for um, any sort of function call that you make. So let's revisit loops and vectors again just one, one last time. And so far we've said that really speed time is based on how many operations it has to perform, how many comparisons it has, has to perform. Well, having said that, it's still nevertheless true that vector operations are generally faster than the equivalent loops, even though, just based on what we just said, there really does not appear to be any good reason for this discrepancy, especially if you just count the operations. But a reason why this is true is that when you evaluate an expression in R, it is translated into a faster lower level language before it's evaluated and then the results are translated back into R. So it's this translation that that takes much of the time. Vectorization, if you leave things in a vector, if you perform a function, an operation on a vector at once, this means there are inherently fewer translations, fewer switching back and forth from the slower, higher level language to the faster machine, machine level language or the language that is closer to the machine level. For example, let's, let's look at this code here. This code will square every element of x, so we'll do this. Each time we evaluate this expression here, we have to translate x sub i into our lower level language and then translate the result back. To evaluate x here, to eval on the other hand, to evaluate this, we translate x all at once and then we square it. So if we're not doing it um, index by index, if we're doing it for the entire vector at once, then all the work occurs at the vector level in the faster lower level language. Okay, this, is, this really goes to the heart of what a vectorized R function is. It performs the function on the entire vector. A vectorized R function means that if the first argument is a vector, then the output will automatically be a vector of the same length. It, it redimensions the intended result to be a vector of the same length. So it's computed by applying the function element-wise to the input vector. So it is inherently, inherently fa faster. Let's close this discussion of speed and uh, accuracy with one more example here. An example of summing columns of a matrix. Now, there's different approaches to sum, to sum numbers across columns of a matrix from more the more efficient to the least efficient. So let's start, first of all, we'll make a big matrix. In fact, that will be the name of our variable, big matrix. So here we do that. And we can take a look at big matrix up here. We can see it's a thousand by thousand integer matrix. We can pop on it here in our studio and it will show up after a bit in our window. So very, very large matrix. And so here we're going to create a variable. It's just going to be a repeat. 
and it's going to be the dimensions of the big matrix. We're going to put NA, so we're creating a dummy variable. It'll have no values. All of the values will be em empty, but it will have the dimensions of our big of our big matrix. So we do that. And we can pop that open too. So it looks like this. Bunch of NAs. Now we're going to look at several different algorithms to sum the columns from least efficient to most efficient. Okay, the first one is this double loop of summations. And uh, every time we do this, we'll, we'll nest it within system time so we can see how long it takes. So this is a double loop. We have an, uh, we're looping by the rows and we're looping by the columns, I, J within I. So this is going to be the slowest. Okay, so we'll do this. Part of it is just the time it takes me to. And it took a little over a second, 1.3 seconds. Okay, let's use the apply function, the apply function. Okay, so apply does vectorize. Apply is much faster. Let's do it with just a single loop of sums, a single loop of sums. really about the same, about as fast as apply, even though the, the seconds, the apply was 0.01. And then finally, we're going to do it with this dedicated R function, which is designed to do just this. And that's much, much faster. The lesson here is that R has its own uh, dedicated vectorized functions that really are also optimized for speed. Now notice that strangely the apply, which is which is a vectorized function, is not appreciably faster than the single for loop because apply actually is the one is one of the apply functions that does create a for loop when it executes. So the two, three, and four pretty much are competitive with each other. There's certainly this double loop double loop of summations. Is, is not appropriate, or is not fast, I should say. And then finally, you need to find the, the appropriate vectorized function in R to address whatever task you're looking at. They're there, they've been created, there's nothing new under the sun. So, um, and in some cases, even faster functions have been created by people like Hadley Wickham and Plyer. So, Okay, well, so much for that. We, now we're going to get into the what I call the number crunching part of this course uh, specifically.